Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Talks with Tony. Got an email today from a young lady and it says, hello, Tony, hope all is well. I wrote to you some months ago about my relationship with my then boyfriend. I had a miscarriage, etc. Well, what I'm about to write, I know you're going to give it to me straight. I expect that. Well, since then, we've gotten engaged March 30th, 2018. Set a date for September 2019. His decision, not mine. Anywho, since then, we've joined church together and he's in training to become a deacon. And I fully support that. But we are still a work in progress. We have our ups and downs here and there. Finances here lately has become our biggest argument to the point where I let him see the back of me. This man, my fiance, went and bought a car without my consent, but has the audacity to tell me that we couldn't get married earlier because of finances. He wants to get some debt paid off first, but going to buy a $25,000 car just puts you right back in debt. So my question to him was, so what's the real reason we have to wait to get married? Cause finances ain't it. He says that I'm going, that I'm not going fast enough for you. He says what? I'm not going fast enough for you to make matters worse. Everyone in his circle knew he was about to purchase a car, but me, am I being selfish or should he just remember me from my back? Hey, thank you for the question. And, and that is a deep question and a common question, which I hear. And I've heard it said and studies have shown that finance is one of the largest issues in divorces. Now, but for you, there's some other things in here that you have to pay attention to. So for one, you got engaged and, you know, y'all were having sex before marriage and all of that. You had a miscarriage. Um, he's in the church training to be a deacon. The question is that I want to ask you that you can't answer to me directly is, are y'all still having sex? If you're still having sex and you're living together and you're having sex and he's in the church trying to be a deacon because you said nothing about we are abstinent now. You said we are a work in progress. But if y'all are in willing sin, then you are not progressing. You are not making progress if you're living together and sleeping together, but claiming to be, you know, Christians in the church. So if you're going to live it, really live it. And that's going to be the first thing you need to tackle. The first thing you need to focus on, not finances. Get your faith right first. Now, after your faith is right, then you can go to your finances. Now, when you go to your finances, what you have to understand is y'all are not one. Y'all are not one. So technically, he still can do what he wants to do. But at the same time, he should be acting like you're one because you're engaged. So the engagement is really a period where you're almost like married as, except for without sex, but you are treating one another like husband and wife. And it's a trial period that should be a max of 12 months. Y'all are going 18 months. So that's very strategic. You got engaged on March 30th. He wants to get married in September of 2019, March 30th, 2018. That means you would be getting married March 30th of 2019. Engagement should not be longer than 12 months. If at that 12 month March, um, 12 month mark, which we may be coming up on, I don't know when this will get released, but you may be, you're sitting right on it. You need to evaluate your relationship and say, is this a man that I can trust? Is this a man that I can love, that I can build with? There is nothing wrong with calling off an engagement. That's the point of it. So if you can't trust this man, if this man does not, if he's not honest with you, if he's leading you on, if he does not respect you, if you've, you've had to walk off on him, you said you had to show him your back. And I know you got that from me because I say that's my wife. She showed me her back. So if you've had to walk off on him, then you have some issues there. Right now is the real honeymoon phase. A lot of people don't understand that before you get married, that's the real honeymoon. That's when things should be smooth. That's when you should be clicking on all cylinders. Things should be going good. You shouldn't be fussing, fighting, going back and forth, struggling and all of that. And so it should be smooth. 
When you have all these issues and you have these red flags and just like you said, you said, you know, you ask him, what's the real reason? Why aren't we really married? Because finances ain't it. And he said, fine. And, and I'm going to tell you this and I'll say this to everybody. When somebody says that finance is the reason they're not getting married, full of it, You're absolutely full of it. Because when you get married, you work on your finances together. Money should never stop love. Love is greater than money. Love, real love transcends time. It transcends money, energy, everything. Nothing trumps love. So if you put real love off, a real union off for money, you're full of it and you're lying. And if you're not lying, then you got your priorities wrong. You need to focus on the love. And in that love, you need to focus on communication. You need to learn how to communicate with one another, how to talk to one another, how to be honest with one another, how to trust one another. That's what you need to focus on before marriage, not paying off debt. You could debt ain't going nowhere. And, and you're not trying to pay off debt when you go and get a twenty five thousand dollar car. So, young man, hear me what I'm telling you right now. You're full of it and you need to get your life together. So, sister, this your young man, this your engagement. Y'all going to the wrong marriage counselor because he or she is not shooting it to you straight. So you and him need to sit down and listen to this together. And y'all hear me out because I'm going on 12 years of marriage and I got married at 23 years old. When I got engaged to my wife, I was married 10 months later. No, when I got with my wife, I was married 10 months later. When I got engaged to my wife, we got married three months later. When you know, you know, it don't take you 18 months. So what kind of tomfoolery is this? You're talking about 18 months, we're going to get married, but then you go and get a $25,000 car and then you go get a $25,000 car without telling your wife to be, but you told everybody else, man, you're full of games, man, you're full of games. You got to get it together. You got to get it all the way together. And then sister, what you got to realize, okay, he's showing me he's full of games. He's showing me he's full of it. So what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm sitting here playing the fool. I'm seeing him playing the fool because I'm seeing red flag after red flag after red flag. And he got me on ice for 18 months. You know what putting you on ice for 18 months do? It allow a man to get his stuff together so he can leave you. It allow a man to get himself together using you as a hold me down, especially if you're having sex. Use you as a sex on demand. Use you as a prop to become a deacon and, and get him a new $25,000 car. Get his deacon certification or ordination, get ordained as a deacon, and then go to the pastor, present all these problems that y'all having, and then the pastor advise him to cut the engagement off when he set up all the problems to begin with, when he have for the problem to begin with, because sister, you have for the problem too. So here y'all is all these problems, and y'all just sweeping stuff under the rug. You're not dealing with it, and you're not being honest with yourselves, and you're not being honest with each other. Both of you plan yourself. Y'all got to focus on what matters. Trust, honesty, communication, and faithfulness. Not just faithfulness to one another, faithfulness to the one y'all claim to serve. Y'all join the church, he trained to be a deacon. Who you faithful to? Because I ain't read nothing in here about we abstinent. And if you are abstinent, congratulations, keep that up, keep going. If you're not abstinent, shame on you. Shame on you, feel shame. Apostle Paul says sorrow leads to repentance. So get your life together, get your life together, get these things in order and do what you have to do. Stop worrying about money. Me and my wife got married. We ain't had two nickels to rub together and we got some nickels to rub now. You build together. You don't get everything in order. If you wait until every light is green before you leave the house, you'll never go anywhere. In marriage, you're going to have to sit at some red lights. You're going to have to sit and focus and work. That's a part of it. It ain't get everything perfect and then we get married because you'll never be married. You'll never be married. Remember, I'm going on 12 years. Guess what? I'm going on 12 years of marriage, still paying off debt. I'm still paying off debt because uh, Sally made them. Or, uh, they done sold it to somebody else now. Navient and Nailnet. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all paying um, them student loans. Still paying it off. Great Lakes. That's what my wife got. Great Lakes. Y'all know about it. And so we still paying it all. You know, got car notes, you got stuff you got to pay. Bills ain't going nowhere. Debt ain't going nowhere. If you want to live in this world, 
you're going to have you some debt at some point, unless you listen to Dave Ramsey. But even then, you're going to get comfortable and you're going to have you some debt, whether it's a mortgage or whether it's a car note or, or whether it's school tuition, college tuition for your kids, you're going to have debt. So don't worry about the money. Just be logical, be practical and just pay your bills. And if you got extra, then pay extra and it's going to take care of itself. Y'all got to worry about what's really important. And that's your honesty and your trust and your communication. That's what y'all don't have. And you shouldn't be getting married without it. And y'all shouldn't be arguing tooth and nail, knock down, drag out right now either as an engaged couple. You ought to be focused and ready and in love and feeling like a honeymoon. And then the problems ought to be presented in marriage. And then you have the strength and you have the trust and you have the rapport to be able to work together to work through your disagreements in marriage. Hey, this is Tony Gaskin. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have a question for me, be sure to send it to inbox at TonyGaskins.com, inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Make sure you check the links in the description just in case I got anything going on that you need to be at. It's great talking to you and I'll see you soon.